Hello, welcome back to my channel. Welcome to this week's car boot sale haul video. Car boot was the biggest it has yet been so far this year. Today, they had filled the front car park, all of the courtyard, and the rear car park with stalls, and both barns were full. And yet, I didn't feel like I was in buying mode. I didn't feel like I had my buying brain switched on at all. Have you noticed, I bet some of you have noticed, every single time I make a video this brass duck falls down. What the hell is it doing? Always the same one. Um, yeah, I, didn't, I just didn't feel like I had my buying head on. I did do filler bag and I did do okay in my filler bag. So, it's a bit of a cute, oh God, it's stuck on the table, a bit of a peculiar filler bag for me today because there's a couple of things there that I wouldn't normally have bought. So, those would be these. Hang on, let's put the filler bag back, back down. These are Coidex grab bars for people with mobility issues to use in the shower and around the home. And I just thought they're brand new in their packaging. That's the door every time. I'm back. Okay, so I don't know what I was saying apart from I was probably talking about these. They are, like I said, grab rails and I've got four all together. There's these two long ones, which are, I suppose, they're probably two foot. And then further down the bag, there's a couple more, but they're at the bottom. I'll find them in a minute. Um, I had a quick look. Between seven and ten pound, I think, and I've got four of them, so that pays for the filler bag. But even if it didn't, these would. These were in my filler bag today. I say this all the time. For those who have not been around my channel before, there is one store at the car boot sale where you can fill a bag for life, or any bag you've got. You can fill any bag for three pounds. So, um, so the, the, when I say my filler bag, that's what I'm referring to. So a pair of sketches, they were in the filler bag boxes today. I grabbed this thinking it was a collection of cross stitches. However, when I opened it up, none of them have any cross stitch fabric in there. None of them have any, what the heck is that stuff called? Canvas. None of them have any canvas. They're all just designs and threads, but no canvas. It says here it should have the fabric in there and the needle, but that they're all just, yeah, they're all just empty. So maybe they completed them and for some reason they kept the little bits I don't know but there are two little books of em embroidery stitches so you never know they might sell they might sell mightn't they so we won't we won't write that off just yet something else that I can get between eight and ten pounds for is this these are the Peter Rabbit alphabet letters um, that people buy for nurseries and stuff like that and this although you can't see it very clearly is the letter Z and it has happy dappy mouse on it so it is the letter z unusual uh, unusual letter for names but i suppose you've got zoe and zachary and all sorts haven't you so maybe not that unusual one of the little brewers that i used to buy for kaiki kaiki's no longer with us but these also sell on ebay these are just ikea bears they sell on ebay as well A little bundle of cookie cutters. I actually picked these up with the idea that I would give them to Josh when I saw him and I didn't see him. He was not there today. So Josh, let me know if you want cookie cutters. Having said that, he was saying the other week that he had lots, so maybe he doesn't even want them. I don't know. And one silicon ice mould, which, as you know, I collect up and put in bundles. Two packs of photo paper. One is magnetic photo paper. And one is just ordinary premium glossy. But again, I tend to collect up the photo paper and do them in a bundle. So they will go to the unit into my box for bundles and eventually come back when there's enough of them. One Port Mirian, Myrian, Murian small plate. This is called from the Up the Garden Path range. Side plate. I do tend to chuck some random stuff into the bag when it's filler bag. War of the Worlds. The chances of anything coming from Mars are a million to one, they said. Um, it has the booklet nicely glued in there. It has both the discs. I have no idea. No idea if there's any resale value in War of the Worlds. But one of the reasons I picked it up is because I've been singing that all week. I must have heard it on the radio or something, and I've been singing it ever since, and then I saw it. So I was like, there you go, serendipity. A little bottle of seam sealer which I got for Anthony. Waterproof seams on cotton canvas, nylon and other synthetic fabrics. Anthony's into camping and stuff like that and I thought that would be useful for him. So that's why I grabbed that. Here are my other two grab rails. These are the slightly shorter ones. 
Uh, I said these are 300, the other ones must be 500 mil. They were only talking in inches. Stop still in the past. And then the last couple of bits, oh they weren't, they weren't still a bag, I just chucked those in anyway, they were my jumbos for the dogs. Last couple of bits, this is probably what makes it worth buying. Not this, this is just a little Lego person, but don't often see little Lego bits so I threw her in. But this, I didn't know when I picked it up what it was, but I did see that at some point somebody's priced it on the bottom at £10. And I was like, if somebody once thought that was worth £10, that's definitely worth throwing into filler bag. I came home, I Google image searched, it turns out it is tor tortoise shell, antique, not, not recently murdered tortoise, antique, probably from about the 1920s, 1930s, tortoise shell and brass, um, possibly a cufflink pot, something like that. Now, you can hear something rattling. What is rattling inside is the screw that would have gone through the hole on the lid and held the little brass knob on top. So, we ain't got no knob, we are a knob free zone here. I have ordered a replacement small brass knob because looking at completed and sold with complete with knob, this could be worth a nice little chunk of money. It could go for anything between 10, which would be bearable, to 110, which would be delightful. So, like I said, new, new knob en route. Can't get the lid back on now. <laughs> there we go. New knob en route, and that may be the find of the day. And if it only sells for a tenner, then it's worth it. Okay, on to my table. This is the first thing I bought this morning, and it is a stack of Tupperware beakers. No lids were available, sadly, because they sell better with the lids. But there is nine in total of the Tupperware beakers. I wonder if this one, this clear one, may not be as vintage as the others. Bear with. <laughs> no, that one's Addis. Now, do you remember Addis? They used to make lunch boxes. Your school, your school lunch box was um, Addis. But yeah, so that one's Addis. That was not Tupperware. But the rest are, I believe. Okay, that. This one says Tupperware and the others don't. I'll have to double check. Either way, they were only a pound for the stack. That one says Tupperware. That one's Tupperware. The more times you say the word Tupperware, the more weird it sounds. That one's Tupperware. Tupperware, Tupperware, Tupperware. That one's very stuck together. That one's Tupperware. <laughs> that one's Tupperware. So yeah, some of them aren't marked and I will need to possibly just not list those. They all look identical though. I don't know, don't know. Let me know in the comments if you know whether some Tupperware wasn't marked. Um, because that would be useful. If you don't mind, let me know. That'd be great. Quid for the lot. A bit dusty. And from a completely different seller. Some days you see vintage stuff where some days you just don't. Completely different seller. Five of the good old Tupperware cereal bowls. And these all have their lids. Those aren't cereal, obviously. Yours is a portion of that. Those are storage. These ones are cereal. And they all have their lids. So that was good for £2. Pleased with that. I've had something in this eye for hours. I paid one pound, I think. Yeah, one pound for a pair of shawl sandals. Are they shawl or skull? We've had this conversation before. Somebody told me the answer, and I don't remember it yet again. I think they're called, I think it's pronounced shawl. They're not my taste, but somebody will like them. And obviously, shawl sandals are quite pricey normally. From Eric, who is the chap who has the really nice dog that we always like talking to. He's got um, what are those massive dogs called? One of those massive ones that they recent uh, uh, bull, bully a uh, bulldog of some kind. Anyway, the ones that they recently said have to be muzzled if they're if they're roaming free or if they're on a walk or whatever. Anyway, he's got one of those. Um, a beautiful dog, beautiful, beautiful dog, and we always stop and chat with him. Anyway, this is a long chat. <laughs> From him, I bought one of these, which is the Remington hair collar, and I've literally just sold one. And when I say literally, I mean I've just packaged it. Just yeah, just packaged it just now. So that will be a nice easy wee list. That was four quid. A little bit more than I would normally pay, but as I think I've said to you guys before, we like to try and buy something from Eric because that dog costs a lot to feed. <laughs> That's an expensive dog to feed, that is. I paid £1 for a Hogwarts jumper. A Deathly Hallows sign on it, Harry Potter. Hasn't got any house name on it, so just just gen generalised Hogwarts jumper. That was £1. That is a size medium. Medium. The lady who had the Tupperware bowls 
also had these bits. Make sure I picked up the right stuff. She had, I think it was this mug. This is a pool pottery Quentin Blake feeding time mug. So Quentin Blake, I'm sure you will recognise, is the same guy that did the illustrations for the Roald Dahl books. That was 50p. And then she had a lot of these collectible Frederick Warren Co. Eden Gift Beatrix Potter range. Some of them were more faded and battered than others, but they are all with their original tags. So I picked up the Taylor of Gloucester. He can sell for up to £20. I picked up Piglin Bland, ditto, up to £20. And then I also got Mopsy. I don't know what about Mopsy's resale price, but um, they wanted three for a fiver on those. They wanted a fiver for three on those. Makes more sense, doesn't it? Yeah. And then... I paid 50p each for two other mugs, which I think were these two. I'm starting to doubt myself now. Yeah, it was 50p or three for a pound, and there wasn't a third one I wanted. So this one is a Disney, and it's uh, Belle from uh, Beauty and the Beast, and it says on the top, sometimes the best teacup is chipped. And then this one is a Roald Dahl Matilda. I don't like small people. So they were 50 pence each. I've already shown you that one a minute ago, haven't I? Why didn't I put it in the bag? And then this other stuff is from Steve. Oh no, that's this is not true. This this was this was 50p, that large Wittard mug, that was 50p from somebody else. And then this other stuff, mostly from Steve. I'll just show you the stuff that isn't first. So a little collection of Rubik's puzzles. I think this one's called the Rubik's Star. I've not seen this one before. A Rubik's ball. I've never done the Rubik's one, I'm not entirely sure what you're meant to do. I don't know how you Oh, you push the balls and they, uh, you, I suppose I've got to get them into the right colours. That was already in the right colour, Carla. Why did you change that? And a Rubik's Cube key ring. Three for a pound on those. And then lastly, lastly, but by no means least, as I always say, from Steve, I paid £15 altogether. That was one of the mugs, so I've, I'm bemused as to how I've got a mug that I'm unaccounted for. Unless it's still in the trolley. I had another mug. Don't know. But I paid £15 altogether, and that was £8 for the puppets, £3 for the filler bag, a pound each for these, and then a pound for a mug. So these were these are the Dono male wraps, and they are for small male dogs who are suffering with incontinence. There we go, that's where they are. Um, and so they were a pound a pack. I think they're quite expensive to buy normally. And then the rest is puppets. It's our puppet. I have got here, for certain sure... The woodcutter, pretty sure that's the woodcutter from Red, Red Riding Hood. Had that before, and there is Red Riding Hood. I haven't got the wolf, but I've had I've had the wolf before. I think I've sold those. And then there is a selection. This is Punch, isn't it? From Punch and Judy. I don't feel like I've got Judy. I've got the policeman from Punch and Judy. And then the rest of these seem to be assorted royalty. So we've got kings and queens with crowns on their heads. Not sure about him. He could be the Sheriff of Nottingham. Um, she's got a crown. He's got a crown. And then the crocodile, which I think would have been from Punch and Judy. So it's a very much a mixed bag of vintage puppets. And I don't know quite what method I'm going to use for selling them yet, whether I'm going to bundle them all together or not. They were £8 for the lot. That's it. That is all of my haul. That is the haul and all of the haul. It was a massive boot sale, but I didn't really feel like I had my buying head on. I just didn't. I was pottering quite happily, and I wasn't unhappy. I was, I was quite cheerfully wandering around, but I wasn't buying a lot. But then perhaps that's because I know that I don't have the storage space for a lot of unlisted stock anymore, and that I also have, already, a lot of unlisted stock. Maybe my sensible side kicked in for once. Thank you for joining me for this one. As always, if you've seen anything you love, drop me an email in the description box below. Apologies to people who emailed me from last week or the week before. I discovered what I can only describe as a secondary junk email inbox. They weren't in my ordinary junk. They seemed to be tucked away somewhere in a corner of my ordinary junk email. And I found about five or six emails from you guys, which I, I, I answered very late last week. So if you don't get a reply, it may be that it's popped into one of my junk email boxes and it's, it's, my, my email boxes seem to be breeding. Thank you for joining me. And I will see you soon. Take care. Bye for now.